Okay, we'll see how this goes here. I haven't drawn anything in quite a while, in a good minute, quite a while. And, uh, it's really a shame. And anyone who's like, uh, seen me draw stuff or seen any of my drawings uh, kind of always like what the fuck <laughs> why, why don't you draw more and to be honest like I feel like any kind of artwork or expression, especially drawing, like your it depends upon what kind of mode you're in. Like if you're in a really creative mode, like in a doodle mode, like that's kind of all all I did in school was just doodle. Uh, like I'm on the side margins of like uh like all my homework, like <laughs> it was just doodles everywhere. Uh and that's it was kind of like a meditation for me even, like, uh, still listening to the teacher somewhat, uh, maybe, maybe it was kind of trying to block out a lot of the retardation that I was, uh, surrounded with going to the public, going through the public schooling system. But whenever you tap into these modes of uh, drawing, it's it's pulling out your inner your inner landscape and displaying that. So at first, the process is going to look. Well, it's going to have its own evolution, of course, the more in touch you get with with allowing that to come forth. And it's kind of the biggest hurdle. And for me, I think it was, uh, it still is, because, I mean, I haven't drawn in a long time. Like, getting over that hurdle of allowing stuff to flow. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to the flow. But... Uh, one of my earliest memories with being very young and um, my artwork or drawing something is having a fellow student kind of rape it in the sense of snatch it away wanting to show everyone and show the teacher and everything but it's like it just left me very uh, perplexed like wh what is it within um, even as very young uh, children and, and, and I experienced this all throughout school so it wasn't just a young child thing it was uh, a teenager thing as well, I experienced this. What, what causes people? I don't, I don't think it's like a, wanting to take credit or anything. It's almost like they want to be a part of someone's creative process, or maybe it's kind of just a mix of a lot of a lot of emotions and a lot of things that happen whenever someone sees. Um, someone's inner landscape come out in a pure way. Um, like, like with any kind of art or music, like when something pours forth from like, from your heart and from your soul, like it's it's hard not to just want to show everyone and, and, and get 
the passion and it like the whole purpose is to kind of inspire people but it's not even that you're trying to do that it's it's the inspiration comes to you and you're allowing that to, to be expressed and also with art and with um, drawing it, it's very intimate it's very personal because it's coming from your own inner depths your I'd say subconscious your own inner psyche and I, I may show show off some of my other things that I've drawn my doodles and whatnot whenever I was uh, a wee lad a lot younger um, just to kind of talk about some of the things that uh, always came natural to me with withdrawing and I'm not for sure quite what to make of it because the things that were always easiest for me to draw just out of uh, well first of all like I'm really good at looking at a picture or looking at a scenery and then drawing from that like you allowing that to be my muse so to speak my inspiration which is nice and everything and that's the thing like I, I didn't I wasn't trying to necessarily perfectly copy it I was I was using it as inspiration and that's also the thing with drawing like uh and also watching a lot of Torrance videos has inspired me to uh, potentially start kind of doing more of these and getting that getting those creative juices flowing again but allowing allowing the picture to draw itself like just going with whatever whatever comes along and expanding upon that and not and yeah, you may not ever really get uh, pictures or drawings that are um, concise or, or anything. Like it's it's going to be more abstract when you just let your imagination flow and let things come about. But this in, in and of itself is a meditation and it feels really good to just get into that flow state and allow and... Uh, can, you can really surprise yourself with some of the things that come forth and just exploring the depths exploring and allowing um, things to create themselves kind of with non-attachment to any outcome or, or, or anything happening which I may, I don't know, do some kind of doodles or whatnot, but for right now, I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of show some of the pictures that I would draw uh, in my younger years. And like I said, I haven't drawn anything for a while, so this may look like shit, <laughs> and that's fine. Uh, but you'll see what comes forth. And, uh, I'm sure people that like <laughs> seeing these kinds of images or like, uh, like things of this nature will enjoy it. But, uh, okay, before I start, I'm like tapping, going back into, uh, whenever I was very young and having that experience of, uh, having someone snatch my artwork away and wanting to, you know, put it up on high for everyone, and I mean, that's taking away from, uh, well, first of all, the person's choice, like, um, it's up to the artist if they are creating art for themselves, and, and that's something that's always, you know, an artist is always going to be kind of, uh, an inner dialogue, uh, having a conversation with, with themselves, like, <laughs> you know, Especially if you're uh, into the industry of, of art, or you make that 
or it's your profession, or it's who you are as an artist, or a musician, or a painter. Um, the, the therapy, the therapeutic aspect of it, like, you'll realize that it's kind of like, even if you feel like, oh, I have to produce something to, you know, earn a living or make money, like, you'll realize that you know, you're producing the stuff that you're allowing to come forth, like, that's just as much for you as it is for everyone else. And whenever you're first starting, or you, you have, like, you know, rough drafts or something, like, you don't necessarily want everyone or anyone to, to see those things yet, you know, like, with a painter or someone or something, like, having multiple drafts and then a finished product, like, whenever they are finished and ready to present that, then they will. So, at a very young age, from the beginning, um, before I even, uh, really had a choice or, or even thought about if I wanted to show these things to anyone, uh, that, that option was taken from me. And then, even, like, later on, I think, another vivid memory of this happening in junior high it's like come on <laughs> come on guys really like you, you, you haven't grown up at all you're still this childlike immature that we got to be behaving like this and uh, it, is, it is pretty disrespectful when, when you take into consideration um, how personal artwork is to the artist especially when, when they're kind of just doing it for their own mm, therapy or amusement or not, not necessarily even wanting to show anyone. Okay, that's enough on that though. And this camera setup is so <laughs> janky. It's great. So this camera's probably going to fall or whatever. Should I play some stuff? I'll uh, play what I was listening to before this. Yeah, about cats and dogs, I'm a cat's a piece of the shit. <laughs> there's, no, there's no two ways about it. Cats are pieces of shit. Some zinny. Because they're turned on you, they don't, they don't, they don't give a fuck about you. But they're, they're just, they're snakes. Oh, cats are fish. And one of the things I've always liked to draw, or I've always just kind of naturally doodled, is there's eyeballs, different, all sorts of different kinds of eyes. Which is probably a pretty common thing.
Yeah, it's just going to be a real quick little thing. You know, it's like shit. That's fine. Gotta begin again sometime, right? There was a huge gang of like, uh, there was a gang of cats. <laughs> feral cats, I was very, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's feral cats all around here. I just told the story the other day about, about some woman that I'm pretty sure she's a witch. Uh, she has like dozens and dozens of cats, and it's so thick that it's right across, like literally across the street from the dog park. It's, it's very confusing. Oh my god. I'm in the awkward angle here, so. I'm just gonna be fucking winging it. <laughs> Battery is low. Oh no. Better hurry to shoot up. So yeah, if you can't tell. 
uh, the things that have always been uh, easy for me to draw for whatever reason out of my imagination are uh, demonic, weird looking demon things. And it just has always been somewhat easy for me to draw. Just allow to come forth for whatever reason. show I don't think cats were fucking natural but I mean I, I love cats because I love pretty much all things until you piss me the fuck off which is also kind of part of life it happens I've experienced uh, deeper aspects with cats that you can, you can tell there's there's some good shit in there as well but they can also be little bastards as well as dogs can be little bastards as well especially when they have retard owners that are fucking douchebag asshole bastards whenever their owners are uh, redneck fuckers who uh, have to have par parking uh, lions to tell them where to park. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm in such an awkward position here. This is hard to do. <laughs> and my phone's probably gonna die, but. Usually I would I would do more shadowing with some of my drawings. Once I learned how to do uh, more shadowing stuff, it was like, ooh, depths and dimensions. How dare you? How dare you park in my parking spot? How dare you? I'm an American. How dare you? I feel like I feel like I'm having today. I feel like I'm totally about it anymore. Bear the awesome. You got a crazy chalk. Okay. See if we can do some quick shadowing here before my phone dies. My smartphone that I found that I use for my videos. I don't I don't use this phone for uh, like my normal phone. Like I have I have a not a smartphone, a dumb phone that I use and I don't use it all that often. And I don't like to keep it around me. I don't I don't really care for phones or things that can pull in certain frequencies that make my physical body feel unwell. And that's just what I feel and it's just what happens for me.
Zim been cracking my fucking shit up lately, man. Shading is so cool. He can add so many layers and uh, more details to things. Make things pop out. But he couldn't really see before. I was only there before. Just the illusion of certain perceptions, dimensions. This is so awkward. Urgh, my arm is numb. I can't feel my limbs. Alright, I'm going to try to speed things up here a little bit, even though I'm already doing some shitty, shitty work, but it's alright, what's happening to my Bob Ross soon enough? <laughs> <laughs> As with the uh, most decent looking or superb looking girls. And it's because they're not attached to, or they're, they're detached from uh, their own inner self, their true self. So that, that immediately comes and shows whenever uh, the intimacy comes along. Because if it all depends upon how intimate you are with yourself, how open you are with yourself, how willing you are to allow yourself to be vulnerable and be exposed, to share yourself like that with someone. Oh, there we go. Some darkness around those eyes. I'm just just gonna make a little, a little tree right here. Just a little guy. He's just, he's just hanging out. Just enjoying this other little tree friend.